Hello and welcome to another video of Totally Tech Tom. In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure and use the AWS provider from the Terraform registry. Now, to begin with, I'm going to install a prerequisite, which is the AWS CLI. So we go here. I've already got the link set up. I'll put all the links in the description. Just need to type these few commands in and that will install the AWS CLI. Uh, one thing to note, if you're using an ARM CPU um, like or, or on a Raspberry Pi or something like that, then you need to use the, the ARM chipset version of this, which is just under this tab here. Uh, but I'm using x86, so I'm just going to grab those, click the button to copy all of these and head over to my terminal. And then you might need to install unzip. So just check that before you begin. Uh, I'm going to move over into slash temp and then paste. So that'll take a little while. Okay. And then run the install. And when that's done, you will be, you'll get a prompt just to say that if you run AWS dash dash version, which we'll do now, you'll get a response back with the AWS CLI version. That installs the AWS CLI. So the next bit is to actually configure it. And there's a uh, helper command just called AWS configure. That will take you through a series of prompts to, uh, to configure it. So in AWS, go to I am, and we need to create an access key and a secret ID pair. So I'll just go into users and the temp user, which is the one that I'm using. And then security credentials, under access keys, create access key. And then we can just download the CSV that is generated. Just as a note, these are sensitive and should be kept secret at all times. Close that. Uh, I'm just going to open that temp credentials. Now, I'm going to destroy these credentials before this video goes out, so I'm not really bothered about anyone seeing these. Uh, but what we actually do now is we take the access key ID, paste that in there. Now we'll grab the secret access key that in there. Uh, the default region, the US2, and then default output, JSON. Okay, so the next bit, I'm going to start configuring the AWS provider within Terraform. So I'm going to CD into my home directory. What I've done, because I'm using Windows Subsystem for Linux, I've created a sim link to a directory called projects, which is in the, which is in my documents on the C drive. Um, but that's not too important. It can be anywhere you want really. So let's just CD into projects and I'm going to create a new folder called AWS provider test. It can be anything really. And then we're going to go into that. Now, Here's one I created earlier, but we'll we'll start from scratch so we can talk about the individual components. Um, but what we're going to do, uh, we're going to go back to the browser and go to Terraform. And on the main page, if we go to Registry, that's where all the providers and modules and various other bits that you can get from the community for Terraform is located. So if we go to Browse Providers, and naturally, AWS is the first one. Uh, click on that and we'll get to the landing page which shows you our version the current version when it was last published that sort of information um and we can actually get the first part pretty quickly by clicking on documentation and this will give us the um basically the starting code to build in the terraform provider file so from an editor, if you go to 
your new project and do a new file and we'll call that provider.tf. It's good practice to actually put these files, uh, keep these files separate. So like your provider file, your versions file, your variables file, etc. Uh, but I'll go into that in another video in more detail. Uh, but let's just grab the first part of this code. Okay, so let's copy and paste that in. Uh, and what we've got here is a Terraform block, which uh, must contain the required providers block. And this is what's telling Terraform what provider to use from the registry. So the source is the HashiCorp AWS provider, which is the one we're looking at here. And in the version, in the example, they use the tilde greater than symbol to say the uh, outermost version number can increment, but everything else is static. So for example, in this case, version four will remain static and version four point, the, the zero uh, will increment. So when I run Terraform in it, what I'll actually get is, uh, version 4.47 uh, and that it's a, it's a good idea to do that just to make sure that you stay on the the same major version so you're not going to get any breaking changes uh, between uh, installs okay so that's the required providers block and now we can figure the provider itself and using the reference given by the required providers we'll specify the provider configuration so the minimum we need to specify here is the region and for me i always use eu west 2 so i'm just going to change that uh, mainly because I'm in the UK, so it makes sense to use the most closest data center to me. Um, so set that. That's that's the providers set up. So now that we've we've defined this, uh, we can actually start using Terraform to create some resources in AWS. So within the projects in the root of the in the root module, we'll create another file called main.tf, and this is where we'll put all of our resource configuration. Staying true to the example, I'm just gonna create a very simple resource, which is a VPC. Uh, and here's that, this again, that's quite a common naming convention. Uh, and I'm just gonna give it a cider block of 172.16.0.0 slash 16. So now on the console, we will type Terraform in it which will install the AWS provider based off the provider configuration that we've defined. Uh, so that was successful. Uh, it'll create a bunch of folders, for example, this .terraform folder. Uh, it can be deleted, it's just a cache, and then a ter terraform lock.hcl, which contains all the version information of the AWS provider. Uh, not really too important to go into um, right now. I might do a video in a bit more depth of what these files are actually for. Uh, but the main the, the main thing is uh, we've got we've managed to initialize the project. So now, if we do Terraform apply, we'll get the plan, which is creating a VPC called this. Uh, with the cider block that we've defined and uh, everything else is just going to be the defaults. And there we go, it's successfully created. If we head over into AWS now and the VPC, uh, switch, make sure we're actually in EU West 2. Head into the VPCs, 
And here it is. This is our new VPC. Now, uh, just as a quick demonstration of why Terraform is so great, <laughs> just go back into the file again. Um, and I'm just going to add an argument called tags. And inside that, I'm going to give it a key, a single key called name, which I'll call it temp VPC. Okay, and then just go back over to the console again and do Terraform apply. And as you can see, the plan this time shows only the changes and it's adding that argument called tags with the key name called um, with the value of temp VPC. So if I apply that and then we go back to the the AWS console and do refresh, we now have our new VPC with the actual name and now it's clearly identifiable within the console. It's great. Um, yeah, so pretty much covers it for getting the AWS provider set up using the AWS CLI. So there's a couple of other options available for passing your credentials to Terraform. The one I've just covered now is the one I would recommend, especially if you're getting started. Um, one of the options is to export your access key and ID uh, out into an environment variable, including your AWS region as, a, as an option. Honestly, I would avoid that if possible, since you're exposing your access keys in plain text in your environment. Um, another option which I might do a video about in the future, is actually using uh, Profiles, which again uses the AWS CLI um, and a function called Named Profiles. So uh, that allows you to use multiple sets of credentials. And that's useful for when you get into multi-account environments where you might have a dev account and a test account and a prod account and so on. And on a similar note, uh, you've got assuming roles uh, as an option. So you can define a single set of credentials, access key uh, and secret key, uh, and use an AWS role to then assume greater permissions with Terraform to be able to set up your resources. And that can also work across account as well. So you only need a single set of credentials and you can use that to branch out into your test and your dev and and that sort of thing. So really, it's quite cool, and I might do a video about that as well in the future. Um, but for now, that covers it. Um, so if you found this video useful, please uh, give us a thumbs up. If you want to check out future Terraform videos, then please subscribe to my channel. But anyway, for now, thanks for watching. See you next time.